and again, the, much like Smallville, he won't become the hero until probably the very last episode, which is probably the same, you know, that we're going to see uh, Jim Gordon. <clears throat> yeah, and, and Kevin Conroy plays the animated version of Batman, which is one that's very well known to most people. And you know, Well, from our generation, I mean, he was the voice of Batman. Yes. I, mean, I, I, I agree. It, you know, it, it is amazing when you look at the list of uh, Superman compared to Batman. You know, Batman has a very small... You know, small list of actors who have played Batman, but they are more known for it. they they last longer as as such. Especially Adam West, who went as long as he had. And Adam West was typecast though for he, like decades. And he also is very you know unknown outside of Batman, which you know is kind of like the same with Superman of you know Christopher Reeve, who is very you know unknown. You know, pre, uh, but I anything mean, else? I, you know, on your list though. I mean, you don't have Brandon Roth, who was in Bat in Superman Returns. He now, of course, plays uh, the if, Adam. On... If I listed every person yeah. who has played Superman, we'd be here for an hour. Well, I mean, again, Adam Roth, who now you know appears on like Arrow and Legends of Tomorrow and other stuff as the Adam. And uh, of course, the current uh, version of it, Henry Cavill. Who, uh, I mean, but none of them, like, have had any success outside of, you know, the comic book well, genre. You know, arguably, you can, you can agree with the fact that Superman is a cursed role. You know, uh, most people who play Superman, they don't get much, uh, you know, um, outside of Superman. And a lot of times, they, they don't even last as Superman very long, with the exception of Christopher Reeve, um, and obviously Dean Cain, you know, from Lois and well, Clark. Well, again, I think... You know, uh, with the case of Superman Returns, it was sort of meant to be as a love letter to the original two Superman movies. They actually treated it as a direct sequel to Superman 2 and, you know, completely, you know, uh, overlooked Superman 3 and Superman 4, which all diehard Superman fans are thankful for. It's kind of like how Jurassic World completely overlooked, you know, every movie with the exception of Jurassic Park. Yes. Which was not a good thing, but we won't get into that because we've ah. already done a show on that. <laughs> and, you know, Superman is cursed. Um, actors go to play Batman to rebirth their career. Actors go to play Superman to kill their career. You know, and, and it's not a good way to look at it, but ultimately that is how it boils down. It's just, and again, it, you mean it's really weird that it works out that way. But I mean, again, it's not. I mean, as I pointed out. I mean, Adam West, it took Adam West decades to be able to finally, you know, to break, you know, the typecasting that he was put through. I don't re name one thing other than Family Guy that Adam West has done. Um, that's because Adam West is a prick. Um, so well, it's I not mean, because there, of his acting There's skill. a great documentary on Adam West. I think you might be able to find it on Netflix. <laughs> And it kind of talks about, I mean, his battle of alcohols and, and the fact that he was typecast. Yeah, uh, but I mean, Adam West is the and, exception. And Val Kilmer, Val Kilmer hasn't done anything really good since. Um, Val Kil, okay, Val Kilmer wasn't even a good Batman, so you can't honestly blame Batman for the reason why Val Kilmer the can't get work. The only reason why Val Kilmer even had that role was that Michael Keaton walked away from it. Yes, because uh, you know, of uh, you know, arguments over you know the creative <laughs> direction and the fact that. Uh, Tim Burton you know, was fired from it, and so you know without Tim Burton, Michael Keaton didn't want to do anything with it. So they brought Val Kilmer in, who was happy to be in like the midst of a divorce or some crap like uh, that. He was happy to be in anything that gave him a chance to you know ignore the fact that he was a giant waste of space. And as for George Clooney, he became a huge success despite being in Batman and Robin. So, you know, I mean, I mean, that says something here, guys. I'm telling you, it's kind of like, you know, I don't know, it's kind of like you were saying, you know, that you know, Richard Pryor was a success in his career, despite the fact he was in Superman 3. Hey, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. potato. Let's call the whole thing off. Yes. Okay. So we're going to take a quick music break and then we'll come back with, you know, we'll talk about Gotham. 
a uh, few other things, and some big news that I have. Yay, big news. <laughs> uh, so enjoy this music, and we will be right back. Hey guys, welcome back to Captain Fizz and Mask Guys Show. So during our little commercial break, I was informed by one of our loyal, loyal fans, Darth Balls, you've heard his name a few times before, Darth has, Balls. has informed me that Batman and Robin was, in fact, a two-hour gay joke, which ultimately I agree with, and I don't care if it offends people because... Holy uh, rusted metal Batman. What? It's holy and it's rusted. Oh, God. We just went down the wrong hole. <laughs> yep, uh, I went there. So, okay. Anyways, we'll, we're going to talk about Gotham, which, you know, has returned, thankfully. TV Th- is finally entertaining again. <laughs> the Oscars is done. Oh, God, People can shoot sto- me now. People can stop caring that, you know, Leonardo Di- DiCaprio actually won an Oscar that doesn't actually matter. Um, yes, I just snubbed the Oscars. It is nothing better than a glorified reason for overpaid, useless actors to get an award for movies that don't deserve it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah, that, considering that Star Wars was completely snubbed in all the awards. Any good movie has always been snubbed by Although, the Oscars. I mean, look at Mad Max. Mad Max did win. It was win a crappy 12, movie. It won 12 Oscars. It the, was a crappy movie. No good movie has ever won at the Oscars because the Oscars is only designed wait, to wait, 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 convince wait, wait. Are, people are you, oh, to whoa, watch whoa, whoa, whoa. the movies. Are you going off and say that Lord of the Rings, Return of the King was a crappy yes. movie? I hate you. I'm sorry. It did not. It, it, was, it, it wasn't I crappy, hate but it wasn't good. you. The Oscars is only I based. I hate you. The Oscars is. I hate you. Shut up. Oscars is only based to convince people to see movies that they normally wouldn't go see. Unless they were told to. And that's this, exactly what the Oscars is for. Okay, well, this is going to be an argument for another day because, honestly... Your you wife know, is going to kill me? I agree. Well, I'm going to kill you, but that's besides the fact. <laughs> you keep looking at, you know, Darth Balls, what are you saying now? Uh, Mad, Mad Max is two hours of holy shoot SP <laughs> effects. <laughs> uh, special effects. Okay. Special effects, uh, I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. I don't know a ton about it, actually. So we're just going to move on. It was just trying to erase Mel Gotham. Gibson. Yes, Gotham. It has been epic since it returned last week. Uh, uh, epic-ish. Epic-ish. Honestly, I, as a fan, I will honestly say that my favorite episode of Gotham, you know, this entire, you know, the series, was last night's episode with, you know, the reveal of, you know, Frice becoming Dr. Freeze. Yes, um, I, I think honestly it was phenomenal, um, and and not just like the Mister Freeze that you know the, the media was trying to portray him in Gotham, but actually literally Mister Freeze, and it's phenomenal. I mean, it's you know the tr- true first real super villain of Gotham, and not you know a bunch of you know act you know well guys that are a little bit loony going hey, up and trying. Penguin to do is stuff. a villain. Penguin is a true and, villain. And I honestly, um, if you've seen the episodes, just some of the stuff the poor Penguin has been <coughs> getting put through since going to Arkham Asylum, you, you kind of see where the guy's going to going to lose it. You know? Yes, and you know, this ultimately leads him into becoming the true Penguin and you know, you know the mobster or whatever you want to call him that he ultimately becomes. Now, I, I ha- there's one thing I have to talk about before we go back and talk about Mr. Freeze. And that is the bodies that were in the the, the freezers, um, and not just any bodies. It was who, in fact, was in the bo- in those tanks. I only saw. <coughs> I, 
I don't actually remember uh, who they were. I mean, one of them uh, was what's his face? Oh god, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, the, the kingpin of them all, um, you know, Gal- Galavan. Galavan. There we go. Galavan was in there. Uh, the guy that everyone thought was Joker, I think. Was the second tank in. Uh, oh. He actually was there. All you saw was the bright red hair floating there. He was in the second tank, which basically was a hint that he is uh, that Jerome is not officially done with the show, that he is coming back. Um, there are also more rumors. Um, I didn't actually see it. I'm going to have to relook at it. But that Fish Mooney may be making an appearance again by the end of the season. Possibly I've heard next she's, season. I've heard she's coming back for at least uh, a couple of episodes uh, sometime this season. Yeah, uh, but they're not saying exactly how, um, if she's alive or if she's not. I believe we are, we are going to find out that she did not, in fact, pass away. That you know, she, they just took a step back so they could focus on you know, you know all these other villains, especially Mister Freeze and all that stuff. Well, I mean, again, you you look at you know some of the other characters. I mean, they went off and they <coughs> showed Butch last week uh, with Galvan's sister, who I mean, I can't remember her name. It's hot as hell. And you know, I just call her t- you know Tigress because that's who she eventually becomes. She's uh, a booty cat. <laughs> But, I mean, it's just, I mean, there's just, I mean, we're we're seeing, you know, I mean, they're talking about Dr. Freeze, and of course we're seeing... Mr. Uh, Freeze. Mr. Freeze, Dr. Freeze, Freeze Freeze. It's always been Mr. Freeze. Oh, well, he's technically the, a doctor, The but eyes whatever. are phenomenal. Yeah, oh, that was epic. But, I mean, we've also, we've seen things, uh, like Jim Gordon, his relationship, uh... uh with his girlfriend is, you know, kind of falling apart at the seams here, and... So I mean, is Gordon. Yeah, Gordon. Gordon is starting to slowly, you know, fall apart here. <laughs> you kind of get the impression that eventually that we are going to go off and you'll know, see him probably end up in Arkham at some well, point. Well, we, we already know that Hugo Strange knows uh, the sort of relationship between, you know, Gordon and the Penguin. You know, because obviously the guy is a peeping Tom and likes to spy on people. But hey, you know. And I mean, he is, I mean, honestly, I think... Uh, for this half of the season, Hugo Strange is definitely going to be the big baddie of you know for the remainder of the season. What what alarms me is how everything is tying in with Wayne Enterprises. Uh, you know the Liquid Hi- uh, in, you know um whatever it was that Victor Freeze or F- Fries got uh, to make his freezing stuff was actually. Through a company of uh, you know Wayne, Wayne Enterprises. Enterprises. I mean Wayne Enterprises just seems to be you know, in so many places, you know, and have so many different branches. Uh, I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, the whole thing just with Indian Hill, I mean, they, they you know, teased it, you know, last season and talking about, like, why is Indian <coughs> Hill such an important, you know, thing? It's just a, you know, dump. Yeah, uh, and, it, you know, it, Indian Hill will be uh, the rebirth of many villains, um, especially probably next season. Uh, I... There's been no report of this or all that, but I will go on a limb and say that we'll probably see uh, Jerome back sometime next season. Um, we'll probably see Fish Mooney for sure. I believe more than just a couple episodes. I believe she's going to come back in a bigger fashion as well. Um, obviously not in control anymore. Um, I'm just looking at it. I mean, if you look at the Underworld... I just can't see Butch being able to hold control for very and, long. And that's why I believe that uh, Fish Mooney is going to make an appearance to come back because Butch is in charge. Uh, there's obviously a reason why the show felt a need to put him you know, in charge. And it was It's obviously leading up to something very, very big, very important. And the only thing that I can possibly think of is that Fish Mooney returns and the big battle there. Um that's the only thing that seems feasible to me. It is possible. I mean, although, again, if we're looking at this, I mean, Fish Mooney is, you know, a character that was completely created for Gotham. So you can't imagine that she's going to be able to stay around for, you know, any length of time. You know, just using this as an example, uh, you look at The Walking Dead where they created, you know, Daryl, who was not in the comic books or any of that stuff, and how long he's been around. It is virtually possible that they can continue having Fish Mooney in the show for a prolonged amount of time, 
and still make it work. Well, um, and I'm going to go back to Superman a little bit 